These are the linear rails that I purchased for this project. And I've got a link in the description in case you want to pick up a set yourself. But it's got the slide and then these bearing blocks that slide back and forth. Now, if you remember the previous video, I took some playing cards and shimmed this so I could get it completely uh, in line with this other piece, get it perfect parallel. And then I got to thinking that that's, that was a whole lot of nothing because I didn't need to do that. For some reason, I thought I was going to be putting the bearing blocks on top and mounting the gantry to this and having it slide, but that's not the case. The rails are going to go on the side like this and then slide. So all of that trying to get this piece parallel with this piece was just wasted time because I can adjust the rail when I mount it. So that's what I've done here. I've taken my little temporary plate that I've made using the template and I've mounted it onto the bearing blocks and then I've got a magnetic base just attached to the plate and a little dial indicator and you can see just barely peeking over the top here. I've got it zeroed out and I couldn't put the dial indicator where this was facing out because of the knob on the back. There wasn't enough room and this is just, you can't, you can hardly see it, but this rail under here is what the dial indicator is. Um, it's what it's traveling on. So I'm going to move it down to the other end now. And you can see that it's about a thousandth of an inch off. So I've got it pretty close. I've got the ends pretty close, but I did notice something when I was moving it across here in the middle. You can see that it's about six to seven thousandths too tall. So what I think has happened is I think that the linear rail here, let me zoom out a little bit, here has just a little bit of a bow in it. And you can see like when I pinch this, you can see that it, it zeroes out. So I'm going to make sure that it's the rail that has a bow in it and not the piece of steel. And I'm going to set that up real quick, which is what I've done here. I have set the dial indicator on the top rail and if it is the linear rail that has the bow in it I should see that same increase in the middle and then go back down so hopefully you can see this on camera but yeah see it's going up and then as I get towards the end it, it goes back down so that tells me that the linear rail has got just a little slight a bow in it and I need to fix that. Okay, so I've got a screw on each end. I've drilled and tapped a screw and put it in there. And also here in the center on each side of this plate. And I've run the, the bearing block down through here with the uh, dial indicator and the magnetic base. 
and it's five thousandths from end to end. The needle wants to, you know, it wants to fluctuate a little bit. It goes back and forth, but it's no more than five thousandths. And I believe that out of all of the types of CNC machines out there, the plasma cutter is probably the most forgiving. And I don't think this will be a problem. If it is, I can always pull the screws out and move this rail down a little bit and put another set of holes in there. But I'm pretty sure I'm not going to have to do that. I've got the holes drilled and tapped for the linear rail and it's installed on the first side. So now it's time to come over here. I flipped the table around. This is the opposite side now. And if you remember this, piece of steel and the one below it are, are parallel and they're the same distance and it's the same for both sides. So I took my dial indicator and put it on the top of the bearing block and just went down the rail and measured and it was 690 thousandths. So I've got this side clamped with the clamps on each end and I've gone through here and it is also 690 thousandths. So I know that this, this rail here is the same height as that rail over there on the other side, and that's gonna keep the gantry nice and square and level, and hopefully I won't have to put any shims in there, but if, if it is off a little bit by the time I weld the gantry and everything and get this all uh, mounted, then there will be room to put shims in there if I need them. So uh, definitely m making it adjustable, but I'm trying to get it as close as I can right now.
Okay, here's where I'm at with the project so far. It has taken a lot longer to get this done than what I had first anticipated. And the main reason is I got a defective linear rail. So I had to send that back, get a replacement, no issues there. Um, that took an extra week. So what I've got right here is I've got the linear rail mounted on both sides. I've got the bearing blocks on the linear rail. I've got the motor plate mounted to the bearing blocks. So now this slides back and forth. And I've also got the gantry support mounted to the motor uh, gantry plate here. And I've drilled extra holes on the plate and the support. And this is going to give me adjustability. So if I have to move this to compensate for a router or a plasma torch, this will give me options for being able to move this up and down. Now let me zoom in here and I'll show you the top. Up here on top, I decided to use the same mechanism from the fab table. And what I've done is I've just, I've got bolts and nuts here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld this plate to the horizontal rail that's gonna go all, all the way over here to the other side of the table. And I'm gonna weld this plate on here. And what that's gonna do is by adjusting these nuts, I'll be able to adjust the tilt like this or the height of the, the gantry, this horizontal rail. So that'll give me some adjustability there to compensate for anything that may be uh, not true or out of square. And you know, uh, things like temperature change. You know, as, as the temperature changes, things may change and tweak a little bit. So this will give me some adjustability there. It also will give me uh, the ability, if I have to, like have a separate rail for the router and a different rail for the plasma cutter because the router is going to be a lot heavier and it's going to have, you know, uh, much more force put on it from cutting than the plasma torch will. So if that's the case, I can just unbolt this top rail and put a different rail on there. So that's all for this week. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please be sure to like and share it. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss part three. And thanks for watching.